very special guest is passionate about God's people, passionate about God's word, and about God's land. She is a beautiful author with a beautiful devotional called The Name, a devotional that celebrates the names of God. Barry K. Mallon is my guest today on Batty's House. Stay tuned. It's all coming up right now. Welcome to Babby's house. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so happy that you tuned in to today's show. Barry K. Mallon is my guest on Babby's house. And, and Barry K. Mallon is passionate about the land of Israel, God's land. Her heritage is there. Her heart is there. And her the focus of her ministry is there. You're going to meet Barry K. Mallon today on Babby's House and hear all about her love for Israel and what should be, as believers, our love for Israel. Stay tuned. We're going to talk about all of that today on Babby's House. But right now, I want to sing a brand new song for you. I'm so blessed to have project number 25. And on this beautiful new project called this I know for sure is this song. I, I want you to hear this song and I want you to hear God singing his love over you today. He wants you to know that he is all you need.
is awesome. It's got everything. What's happening? Just got it today. I was telling Jimmy all about the new features. It's fully loaded. It's got a navigation system, satellite radio. Yeah, we're listening to that. It's got a DVD player in the front and the back. Hey, baby. Extended cap. Yo, man, you better stop. Rear view camera. Man, I, I gotta go. Near train tracks, stay focused, stay alive. Gift giving is hard. Gift giving is an art. What do you give the person who's got everything? I wanted to do something different. I wanted to surprise him. I remember looking at the card and saying, what's this? Sounds like I got you chickens. We gave my father-in-law some ducks. Oh, I'm really getting a goat and you start making plans to build a gate in your backyard. I gave her a heifer. You're giving me a cow for my birthday? A cow, some goats, and some chickens. I was, I was so happy. They're not coming to my house, right? I thought a swarm of bees were going to arrive at the house. And then she explained have her international, and I started to cry. Gifts like this change lives. A farm animal helps families in hunger. So they can raise their own food. Children have medicine. Women have a voice. Give different. Christmas, Valentine's Day, Hanukkah, whatever you want. Give a family life. It's more than a gift. It's the best gift I ever gave. I served in the Marine Corps for four years as an infantry rifleman. I have served in the United States Army for seven years. I served four years in the United States Marine Corps. I've been currently serving 13 years in the U.S. Army. I served four years in the United States Marine Corps. And I'm looking at deploying in 10 months. I did three tours in Iraq. I completed 180 combat missions in Iraq. You were there for us. Now it's our turn to be there for you. Community Blueprint Network. Log on today. Welcome back to Babby's house. I want you to meet a very special lady with a huge heart for the nations, particularly the nation of Israel, because the nation of Israel is her homeland. And as believers, it's our homeland too. Um, it, it is our, our uh, prayer to pray for Israel and support Israel with our prayers, and particularly at, these, at this season of our nation's history. And none of these things happen by mistake. God is on his throne, he's sovereign, he's over all, he's Lord of all, he's Lord in all, he's Lord over it all. And uh, my special guest today is Barry K. Mallon. She is a beautiful author. I want her to tell her story in just a moment, but I want you to know about her books. She has uh, some beautiful books that she's brought, brought with her today. Uh, this book called The Name celebrates the names of Jesus. It's a daily devotional. And she has another book called There's Something About That Name. And both names tell you the Hebrew and the, the English translations and a little bit of a, a nugget of truth concerning the name of Jesus. I want you to help me to welcome to Babby's house, Barry K. Mallon. Barry Kay, it's so good to meet you. I'm so happy to have you on the show today, Barry. It's great to be here. Your song is like a hug already. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Amen. That's and I want beautiful. you to just know that God loves you. His love is passionate. He is not mad at you, but he's mm. madly in love with Amen. you. Amen. And as his children, you know, I had this revelation the, uh, the other day. The, the Bible says in John 3:16 that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And so uh, Jesus is the only son of God. In essence, mm. Jesus is an only child. Mm -hmm. And God loves us, according to John chapter 17, verse 23, God loves us just as much as he loves mm. his own son. So God loves us as if we were the only one to love. He mm -hmm. loves us as if we were his only children. Do you know how a mother loves her only child? Preferred, special, favored, blessed, mm. pouring all of that love and all of those blessings out on that only child. That's the way God loves Amen. us. Amen. I receive that. Amen. Beautiful. Do you receive that? And I pray that you receive that as well. God loves you as if you were the only one to love, according to John 17, 23. Well, Barry, I'm so happy to have you on the show today. I want you to tell us in this, I wish we had more time. I'm going to close my mouth and I want you to open yours and tell us about Barry K. Mallon and about this passion you have for Israel. Well, I'll share my testimony. I'll, I'll share my story because uh, although I grew up in a Jewish home, we all can relate to having a broken moral compass. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I did, although I was raised in a home that was morally a good home. 
uh, religion was just that. It was no relationship with God. It was no emphasis on prayer. It was, you did this, you did this on a certain mm -hmm. holiday. Mm -hmm. And I would have called myself really a holiday Jew. My father was an Orthodox Jew, very strict. My mother came out of Reformed Judaism, very liberal. So when we f ended up first at the Reformed Temple, then it split, and we went to a Reformed synagogue, I mean an Orthodox synagogue, I was put into a situation of which it was all ritual, um, custom, and no God. And I was alienated from Judaism. Mm. And yet I remember hearing Jesus was a Jew. I remember looking for his name in the Sunday school indexes of my books, not finding it. So asking, who is Jesus? And I was taught, he's a good man, maybe a prophet, but not born of a virgin, not um, the son of God, and not resurrected. So that was how I was taught. In college, I took a course in Socrates and Jesus. My first, the textbook was Good News for Modern Man, a real liberal translation of the Bible, which I remember sitting on my dorm bed. And again, I didn't even know who Jesus was, but I remember trying to read Revelation, trying to understand it. After the course, the Bible went on the shelf till years later in 1980. I was a sales lady selling copiers, and I made a presentation to two men. Well, a group of men, five or six men in Dallas, Texas, not Georgia, but Dallas, Texas, and they asked, I said, I came back the next day to find out if they had decided on my product, and they really treated me with respect, no innuendos about being a woman in sales, especially back then, and two of them asked me to go to lunch. I said, my cousins had a deli around the corner, and as we were walking out of the office, one of the men said, you know, what religion are you? And I said, well, I'm, I'm Jewish. I thought he would have connected that anyway when I said delicatessen. And he said, well, Larry um, is also Jewish. His associate, who he was with, the owner of the firm. And I said, well, funny, you don't look Jewish. Because that's the thing, you know, the one Jew will say to another Jew, because we kind of all have that look, okay? And he said, yeah, I'm a Messianic Jew. And I said, oh, what? I knew of a foreign Orthodox conservative, but I said, Messianic, and this is in 1980. He said, yeah, I'm a born-again Jew. And I said, is that like that location in Dallas where it had a cross, a star of David, and a fish, which I thought the fish was a sorority sign. They didn't know what it was. And he said, yes. And over lunch, he shared with me two verses. Isaiah 53, 6, all of us like sheep have gone astray. Each has turned to his own way, but the Lord has taken the iniquity of us all on him. And Psalm 22 about the cross. But when he told me Isaiah 53, 6, the light switch went on in my heart. And the Holy Spirit helped me realize that he was telling me about Jesus. And I was saved right there in mm. the deli. I mean, instant. I thought everybody God. came to faith in Jesus that way. And I asked, well, what do I do about my father? And he shared with me the verse in Luke, whoever, you know, whoever forsakes mother, father, sister, brother in this life for Jesus shall have many blessings in the life to come, eternal life. And that solidified, that changed my life. I walked into that deli on the way to hell and out of the deli on the way to heaven. I mean, it literally changed my life, Abby. My moral yes. compass changed. I mean, I was a smoker, partier. And, and God just did the 180. Yes. Um, he took all that away. Not only that, but um, he helped me live for him, get right with him, live to learn, you know, live an obedient life, pay my bills on time, try to owe nobody anything but love, you know, live in the Bible the right way. Because my father had the zeal unto the law, mm -hmm. okay, unto mm -hmm. knowledge. Mm -hmm. But in Romans 9, it says that we're, we're to have a zeal unto righteousness, and it's the walk of grace that we are saved, not by deeds, yes. not by the law. Yes. So um, my oldest brother in 73, seven years prior, had come to faith, to fellowship of Christian athletes, and then I found out he was a believer. And my middle brother came to faith about eight years ago. Is that and right? And my baby brother's not saved yet, but his son serves for navigators. Oh, my ministry. goodness. Ministry. So the Lord Praise has God. been. I've never married. God has not had that for me. Um, my number one prayer request has just always been for the you know, eternal salvation of my family. Yes. And it's not being noble or anything else like that. It was just, I've always wanted to be married. 
But beyond that, God had really, he says he puts eternity into our hearts. Yes. And that counts for eternity, your family being safe. Yes. Counts for eternity, not just the here and now. We are going to take a break, but we're going to come back and hear more about this powerful story and about this beautiful ministry you have. And you stay with us because after this break, we're going to come back with more conversation with Barry K. Mallon. And you stay tuned. We'll be right back after this. A few years ago, I noticed I was feeling increasingly tired. My fatigue was so intense that I got to the point sometimes when I got home from work, I couldn't even remember the drive. The excessive tiredness and forgetfulness, not to mention my snoring that constantly woke up my husband, prompted me to get a sleep test. The results showed that I have sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is a common disorder. In fact, 50 to 60 percent of those who snore have it. Many couples accept snoring as an inevitable part of nightly life, but sleep apnea is associated with serious health problems, such as the risk of high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, and even heart failure. Treatments for sleep apnea range from